Good morning, Miss Lady. Good morning, Miss Lady. Good morning, Aleta. Good morning, Desire. Good morning, Sebastian. Good morning, Alana. Good morning, Harrelis. So I think I try to create a culture in my classroom where my students are the mathematicians and they're figuring out their own strategies. They're collaborating together to come up with strategies to develop their conceptual understanding of the math. Take 30 more seconds of think time. Let's start with our person closest to the window. Which one would you choose? 25% off or $25 off and why? Window people start and pass it to someone else. Go for it. Like imagine your total being a thousand dollars, and if you take away twenty five dollars, that basically will be nothing. And so it's twenty five, and like it goes down to like it's yeah, it'll be it'll be like a little way more. I try to create a culture that's not like right wrong. It's what are we thinking right now, and how can we move that thinking forward? So we're gonna do a quick stand up discussion. So if you believe $25 off is the one you would choose, you're going to go to the window side. Let's do a quick turn to someone where, near us, preferably someone that you haven't already talked to, um, about why you went where you did. Go for it. 25% would be a big difference for, um, like, $50 dollars an example. But like, if you have a very little, yeah, if you have like a very little bit of money, fortunately, it'll be different. I don't know how much it is. Thank you so much for sharing. Just the flow of the lesson is students grappling on their own about a concept. They come in, I try to make it like a low floor, high ceiling task where it could be like a notice and wonder, it could be would you rather, it could be which does not belong, um, where students are just thinking on their own and then they share with their team and then we have a whole group discussion. So again, it's students are the leaders, like they're calling on each other, they're um, thinking about the math on their own. I'm not commenting on anything, it's they're, they're in the independent thinkers and then thinking as a group. So I heard Alan say, when it's more expensive, we should choose the 25% off. When it's less expensive, he thinks we should choose the $25 off. Just check in with your table, do you agree with that? Why? Is there, is there a price where you would say, oh, if it's this expensive, I better choose 25% off. If it's this expensive, I better choose $25 off. Okay, talk to your table. Let's take 30 seconds for that. Go for it. I so today is our first day where we're really digging into percents. So just some quick reminders that you might have learned last year. Um, first reminder, Joanna, can you read that for us? Let's do a quick norm set. Everyone take a moment to just read through the norms and decide on one that you want to focus on today. And if you're closest to the window, share your norm first and then ask a teammate which norm they're going to focus on today. So okay. norms are basically like, um, like, like rules that um, people in the class follow. And you can choose a norm that you want to follow. Each day that we go into math, you can choose the same one or a different one. I think um, like, I'm respectfully disagree or agree because mostly when like people try to disagree, like people feel very uncomfortable disagreeing with ideas. So, like, yeah, I agree. Uh, Amy, which norm did you choose? We developed these norms as a class. We like modified the list throughout over a few days, kind of thinking what, what was most important to us. And we just try to refer back to that list. We, we, we look at the list in the beginning of class and share which norm we think is most important for us today. And we just keep it as a living part of the class and just supports us in creating the culture that we want for students to really own their own thinking. Danielle, can you take it away for us? Because I see you were the first leader of the year. Um, and you can pick who your recorder is. It's just to make the students more comfortable in talking. Because most of the students in my class don't really like like share out a lot, so I think it's just a way of allowing the students to just share more. I think supporting each other is really important because this is like community work, because if you don't get it and then your partner gets it, like I feel like it's no point of you getting it when others around you don't. I think, yeah, just really important overall, like helping your classmates. Let's just share with our table what 
strategies we're going to be focusing on today based on our learning target. Go for it. So that kind of cycle repeats during our like more formal grapple where they're given a problem. I really believe in giving them like think time on their own before they start collaborating. That structure allows them to really own the math and we're starting with what they think, not like let me show you this strategy and now you try it. You guys are the thinkers and we're gonna all build off what you are working on. Okay, we're gonna go to some grapple time. So for our grapple time today, um, let's just go through the expectations. What do our voices sound like when we're grappling? Let's go for it. When I'm planning, I'm looking at the grapple problem that we're focusing on, and I'm thinking about what are the different ways that students will approach this. So for example, today was focusing on percent increase and decreases. The most common strategy I anticipated seeing, which I saw, was the ratio table. Students identifying one side is the percent side, one side is the ounces or dollar or whatever, the, the context of the problem is. Um, and students identify what the 100% is as the original amount, and then they find either they go straight to what we were looking for, the 20% or the 120%, or they find the unit rate, the 1% first. So that's a very common strategy. I also anticipated some students might draw a tape diagram. Some students might have the more traditional approach of multiplying by two-tenths um, to find 20%. Some students might be totally stuck and have a blank paper, um, and you have to feel comfortable with that. Um, some students uh, might have strategies that don't really make sense. And my process is to list those strategies and then think through what questions could I ask them to advance their thinking and to assess where they are. Like a student who has a blank paper, what could I ask to help them get started? Explain to me how you got from here to here. As I'm walking around, I use that to note, okay, which students have the ratio table, which students have the tape diagram, which students multiply by a decimal. Um, and then I think through, okay, what strategies do I want to show during the group share? I also sometimes ask those students to present their work to different tables as a different type of share. When I'm circulating, I'm like writing down, okay, who did this? Um, and then I'm also trying to ask them questions if I want to understand more deeply what they did. And then I try to use that to sequence what I'm going to show in the share. Let's go to some collaboration time. If you are sitting in the seat closest to the closets, you're going to start the conversation. It's okay if you say, I was stuck because of this, or ask a partner to um, share their strategy. Closet people, Start us off and then pass it to someone else. I didn't do it because I'm confused. How did you like even talk? What was your strategy? I just turned the percent into a decimal. So it's easier for me when a student explains it to me because I'm listening from their perspective, which we kind of like have similar questions in a way. Sometimes there's like a lot of mistakes we do and we correct each other. Sometimes we could disagree, sometimes we could agree. We just collaborate to make sure like everyone's on the same track so we all just help each other. If we don't, you know, we're not, some people are not going to understand, they're not going to do it well, and then it's not really going to be learning. Did you do that on the same side? Like, I don't know the answer, but I'll forget. I love these conversations. We're going to come back together. First of all, I have some all-stars that I wanted to share. Aleta and Haralise, for the same reason, whenever they're sharing a strategy, they always show it on their, not always, but most of the time, show it on their whiteboard. Um, so that everyone can see. And I love how Joanna's agreeing, like, yeah, Lara showed us the strategy. Um, Since and I got it wrong and I learned from it, I just grew from it in my math skills. I just got an all-star because of that. It's like a thing where if people do like better than they used to before, like if they do good in the class, you get an all-star. And we're gonna look at a strategy that I saw around. Let's look at this table. I'll try to zoom in a little more. It's good to be able to explain other people's strategies and make sense of other people's work. Do you agree with Sylvie's strategy? Do you disagree? What do you see her doing here? 
Talk to your team. Go for it. Even though uh, in ten percent, actually, we can lose a hundred. So it makes sense that we can lose a hundred percent. What did Sylvie find before she found twenty percent? What did she find before she found twenty percent? Camila. Who heard what Camila said? Camila, call on a teammate. She said one. Could someone expand? What does she mean by one? Thank you, Joanna. My goal is the, that the ratio of student talk to teacher talk is as high as possible so that it's not like a ping pong. You know, teacher says something, student, teacher, student. I'm like trying to get as far away from that as possible. And an easy structure to help that is to have students call on each other. And sometimes I have to chime in just if I want to make sure that other students are heard. If there's sometimes like, oh, you're calling on the same people, then I'll chime in. But the idea is, okay, you speak, pass it off, pass it off, pass it off. If I have to interrupt, I will. But a great class is when I'm not interrupting. I'm not saying much. Joshua, do you mind explaining your strategy? So, my was under 20% any questions for Joshua? I think of myself as like the facilitator of math learning and not like I'm spoon feeding you strategies that like I want you to copy my strategies. Um, I want you guys to develop strategies because you can all do that and learn from each other. Let's look at Leah Marie's strategy. Talk to your table. What do you see that Leah Marie did? Go for it. Harrelise did something, I'm not going to put up her work, but she actually didn't find 20%. She found, Harrelise, what did, percent did you find? Harrelise found 100 You don't always have to get the right answer. Your answer could be wrong, but that is what makes us learn from our mistakes and grow. That's a very important part in like math and, and life too, and like a lot of other things. Our target for today was to understand percent increase and percent decrease problems. And one of the models we wanted to look at is a tape diagram. Which one of these tape diagrams represents a percent increase? And how do you know? Just share with your team once quickly. You have to believe that this works. And you have to believe that students can do it. And you have to stick to it. And some days are going to be like, wow, that was a total bomb. Like, they did not get the target. And that doesn't mean that, like, you have to suddenly take their thinking away. And you have to, like, stop being a facilitator and start modeling. Just know that it can work and it's a process. And again, believing that students can do it and students can own their own math thinking and can create a culture where they're the mathematicians. Bye, Rosemary. Bye, Carla. You okay? Bye, Amy. Bye, Janice. Bye, Joshua. Thank you. Bye, Jadiel. Bye, Leah Marie.